Football Scope, a podcast of two guys in their 20s, giving the perspective on the games that we love, headlines of pop culture, and the meaning behind it all. Uh, I'm your host, Quentin Burns, and my kind of bar sale on board, so it's not able to be on for this one, but I'm joined by two special guests. I'm Isaiah Barth, who is a good friend of mine. Thanks so much for being, for being on, bro. Uh, no problem, man. Yeah, definitely. And also, Jamil Davis, he's been a, a long time guest for the show, a really good friend of the show, and thank you also for being on, man. Absolutely. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be on. <laughs> I'm happy to I'm happy to finally be on during the video the, 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 the video era. As the I video like era, it's the new era. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man, definitely. And we have, and for this episode, we're going to review a lot of different albums um, for this one. But to start off with Freddie Gibbs, Soul Soul separately review and just thoughts on some of the best tracks um, in this new album. You know, you know, even though there may not be the same lyrical and thematic occasion as Alfredo, it still has just a strong conceptual framework. Um, plus, has opulent sounding beats like Space Rabbit and Blackest in the Room, um, which contain just surgical bars and navigates between just the rapid fire realities of dealing and soul searching. Um, but to you, Jamil, like it started off, like what were your initial thoughts on it when you heard it and just some of your takeaways? Um, right now, for right now for me, it's between Freddie Gibbs and Jid for album of the year. Mm. Like that that literally was my initial thoughts after listening to the album. I was like, I was like, oh man, Freddie actually got it. Freddie been on this nice three album run. It's a crazy run. You know, um, Pinata, Alfredo, and now so 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 separately, which yeah. not too many people realize this, but this is actually his major label solo album debut. Mm. Like all the other stuff that's come out on major labels have been like collab collab yeah. albums with him and another producer, but yeah. this is like this is Freddie. This is strictly strictly, strictly him. Freddie. Yeah. Um and he don't Freddie don't disappoint. Freddie never disappoints. Never. And um I was very, very, very impressed with with this album. And like I said before, it's 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 Freddie, Freddie and Jid, and they can interchange as Any far as week. who is number <laughs> one. Um and then right behind them too is Joey. Yeah, man. And and, yeah. and, 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 and for you like Jamil, like, did you expect Freddie to out to like in terms of like comparing this to one maybe Alfredo? Like, how do you? Mm-hmm. F- I, I know it's early; the album just dropped. But like, how do you feel about like how it is compared to an album like Alfredo, which just had The Alchemist going off of the production and it also being Grammy nominated? Um, I I feel like this is going to be another this this is going to be another award nominated, award possibly yeah. an award winning album. Um, I think Freddie is Freddie is definitely gonna get some looks on this one. Yeah. Um, I would venture to say, just because of the actual concept that he built around the album, that this might be a tad bit better mm. than Alfredo. Okay. Um, and the fact that he was able to he got out of his comfort zone. He got out of his comfort zone in this one compared yeah, to yeah, exactly. Well. Yeah. And he was able to use so many, he was able to use so many top quality producers. Not taking anything away from, not taking anything away from the fact that he had just one producer on Alfredo. He had one producer on Pinata because I mean, Alfredo was Alchemist and Pinata was Mad Lib. So what more can that, you that's, want? <laughs> that's nothing to sneeze at. But yeah. I mean, he was able to go. He was able to go get Justice League. Yeah, and and do a Justice League song and sound really good over a Justice League beat. He 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 had Alchemist come and do too. He got um, DJ De High to come and do like he was able to get these producers and he was able to get some quality. Um, he was able to get some quality features that made sense. He got DJ Paul on the album and the song is produced by DJ Paul. By DJ Paul, exactly. Yeah, you know, um, he got money bag, yo. Um, uh, that, uh, I mean, that he, song is fire. That song is crazy. Yeah, that, song, yeah. that song is crazy. Like that's that's literally one of my favorite songs <laughs> on the entire album. And because I, I was like, it makes it makes sense. The features make sense. Yeah, like you can you can sometimes go and get features just to clout chase, mm. or you can go and get features that make sense. And the features made. The features make perfect sense. 
and that's what made the album that's what made the album so great to me um and shouts out like i applaud freddie it this For real, man. this this was this was one this was this was the one so yeah for you isaiah like li- listening to this album and just kind of like some of your takeaways like how did you feel like when you first heard it and everything that he put together well to be honest like first the production on it like yeah he used he did he really used his resources now i'd say you know what i'm saying because there's a lot more producers on this and you know just like he said the one producers that he had like you know in the past some of the songs for me i seen like were like i guess like three six mafia stuff like inspired or like what else bone thugs and harmonies yeah. inspired mm-hmm. like the one with um all set like mm-hmm. i recognize that flow and that that cadence immediately it was like oh that's three, that's that three six mm-hmm. exactly and yeah. like i'm saying even when he was on like it just so like i just felt like it's so like he showed like his versatility mm-hmm. on like what he could do on different beats on this one yeah to me like this is already top five like for, oh, for, for the sure year. easily already like yeah. I'm still crafting my top five, but that's going to be like, that's definitely going to be up there. Yeah. You know I'm saying it really too much to say, but you know what I'm saying? This is a great album. Yeah, for sure. Um, and to, to you, Jamil, like, would you have like, are there any tracks that you would put like maybe at the top of your list of ones that you kind of go back to a lot? Cause to me, like black us in the room was a really good track too much. Definitely. Um, I think grandma stove was, was another one with, with music soul child, like a, a really high level track. Like, were there any like main ones that you kind of go back to the most? Um, I found the instrumental for Blackest in the Room, so I'm I'm probably gonna low key do a mixtape. You're going crazy. I'm like, I'm gonna do a mixtape joint over Blackest in the Room. I'm gonna be ready for that. Um, one. Yo, well, until we should do we should do a track the the uh, of the um of Freddie Gibbs. Oh yeah, that's yes. that, that, yes. that's what we gotta do. That's what we gotta do. I figured it out now. Yeah. I figured it out now. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. absolutely. Um, Bruh. but yeah, Blackest in the Room. Um. Too much, yeah. Zipper bags, um, oh, zipper bags because Kate Trinata spazzed out on that beat. Like, like I mean, just the beats on here, of, the beats on here. I know there are other rappers that are just losing their mind listening to these beats. Like, bro, literally, like you can't say too, you can't say too much about Freddie's rapping, but like the the production on this album was top notch. So yeah, yeah, blackest in the room, zipper bags, too much. Um, lobster omelet, Lo- lobster omelet, lobster mm-hmm. omelet, lobster omelet could have actually, it could have gone either way. You could have put that on a Ross album, or you could have put it on, a, you know, that's you what I'm saying. It it's interchangeable. Album. It's interchangeable. It's really interchangeable, man. Um, feel no pain. Feel no pain is my favorite. Feel no pain is my favorite song on the album. Like my Anderson, two favorite Anderson songs Pac- on the album with Anderson Pac and Raekwon. Yeah. yeah, my yeah. two favorite songs on the album are "Blackest in the Room." And feel and feel no pain, um, but I also love Gold Rings and Grandma Stove, um, and the bonus track, the the bonus track, the coded with, with Scarface. Like Freddie, Freddie Gibbs and Pusha T was a match made in heaven, bro. Like those two on the track, everybody was looking forward to it. Everybody was looking. Yes, forward it to was. That. It's it's literally like it's literally like Pacino, Pacino and De Niro at they sitting at, at, at the prime. coffee table. <laughs> yeah, Pusha T and Freddie Gibbs. For real. There it is. For real. Hey, let's hand it to you. <laughs> exactly, bro. Exactly. To, to you, Isaiah, were there any tracks that you kind of go back to uh, the most in this one? Uh, let me check my playlist. Every song that I that I like, I put them on a playlist. Same. Let me see. Let me see. Um... Yeah, Blackest in the Room, Pain and Strife, and Too Much. Yeah, and uh, the the lobster omelet. Those are the, those are just too fire. It's but I don't know. It's something about that three six flow that I like when, especially when Freddie Gibbs do it. Oh yeah, I don't know. Like he spazzed on that one. Definitely. That might be my number one for that one. Would and then either- after that, um, blackest in the room, then lobster omelet, and then too much. Mm-hmm. For sure. Would either of you say say like there was like a best feature? Like like do you guys think there was a feature on here that you say was like the top one, the, the person that really kind of fit on the track perfectly in this album? I got three. 
Okay. So I have so I have so I have three songs that had dope features. Um him and Pusha. For sure. Him him and Pusha. It's like who can talk about crack the best? <laughs> That's literally what that was. Yeah. Um Feel No Pain. Mm. You almost thought that that didn't make sense until you hear the song. And then it's like, oh, this is perfect. Like the the way the beat the way the beat was laid out, it sounded like an old beat that could have been on Raekwon's Olin Built for Cuban Links album. Mm-hmm. Um Freddie gets on there and does what he does. People forget that just because Anderson Park is in Silk Sonic, that he really does rap. Like he legitimately mm-hmm. raps. Yeah. yeah. Um and then Raekwon is Raekwon is the chef. So yeah, and, and then the other one, and then the other one was was too much, cause money. Um, the other one was too much, cause money bag, yo. That was a perfect yeah. feature for that. Track. <laughs> that was a perfect, yeah. That was really a perfect feature for that for that one. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was just astonished by that one. I was like, yeah, I had to go back and listen and, and listen to that one a couple of times. So, for sure. Yeah. Isaiah, to to you, like, like, was there a best feature on this one? Wait, come on. Hands down for me, Wayquan. Wayquan is like he's one of my. It's like he's like my top two in the Wu Tang. Mm. I mean, you can see the shirt right here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Period. Thanks, so, but yeah, like you. you know, he's top two, and that and number one would probably be Shaheem. Uh, he's not. On, I don't think he's on Wu Tang anymore. But he was like the low kid. He was like the low kid on 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 on. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely, Rock, this, uh, Raekwon always be spazzing. Seriously. Like this, ne- like like you will never hear a bad verse from Raekwon. Mm-hmm. Ever. Ever. Shout, shout shout out to shout out to Wu Tang because you know they just did this. They, I mean, and they're still on it now. So they're doing this New York State of Mind tour. Yeah. With them, Nas, and Busta Rhymes. Like, what type of ill combination is that? Um, and they were they were in. They were in Tampa a few weeks ago, and I was able to go to, I was able to go to the Tampa show. Um, wow! And to and to see Wu Tang live on stage, um, no, and and let's throw this let's throw this out here. So the best verse that Nas has ever written in his life was not on a Nas album; it was on Raekwon's album on Verbal Intercourse. That's the best Nas verse ever mm-hmm. in the history of mankind and to watch them perform that song live right. like yeah. Nas, Ray, and Ghostface is on stage live performing verbal intercourse I was 13 years old all over again I was like <laughs> I was like, this is really yeah yeah, Man, yeah. that's yeah. crazy it's, it's video of it on my Facebook but like yeah best, best night that's ever bonkers. that that and seeing Nas perform "The World Is Yours" mm-hmm. live, cause, 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 quick fact: "The World Is Yours" is the song that made me decide I wanted to be an MC. Wow. Like, I want the I want the rap after seeing Run DMC walk this way video, but I wanted like, I was like, yo, like this is what I want to do in my life. Yeah. I want to do this after I saw Nas's "The World Is Yours" video. So to to see him perform that on stage live, like, and the and the people that were around me was just like in awe because I knew every word to the song. They was just like, like it was it was this lady that was standing next to me with her husband, and she was just like, "Honey, look," and she and they was pointing to me, and I'm just rapping, I'm just rapping this song. Word for word, with with tears in my eyes, because they was like, "Yo, like his wife was like, yo, like he is breaking down." I was, bro, like, y'all have no idea, like, it the 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 thirteen fourteen year old kid was in front of his heroes, <laughs> watching no them way. watching them work. So, like, yeah, no, nah, shout out shout out to Nas and Wu Tang, bro. Like, that's if if you in a if you in an area, 
where these last couple of dates is going to be at. Y- y'all got to go. Yeah, that's that's the show to go see. Yeah, for it's sure. worth the money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. And, 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 and um, another album I wanted to get to that, you know, me and Savannah have already reviewed, but but I haven't reviewed it with you guys. It's Joey Badet's 2000. Like, that's one of, like, the defining albums of the year. Like, to you, Isaiah, like, that's one I know you really like a lot. Like, how do you mm-hmm. feel about how that album has, like, aged over the months and just kind of, like, how it's still ranking up with some of the best this year? Well, I still play every song on that album, but we'll just go back to the album just listening to every single, like, time I feel like it. Yeah. Like, it's like... You know what I'm saying? Cause I was, you know what I'm saying? I was, you know what I'm saying? I, didn't grow, I grew up like not too far from Joey. You know what I'm saying? And like having, the, you know, seeing the impact that he had in New York. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's just like, oh, yo, he's bringing New York back. Like he got, he's on them old school beats and all that, you know? And he's, you know, and it's like funny to see like how the fans had really changed with Joey, like like one day they like yeah. Joey, next day they don't. they don't. One day they like what he's doing and then he hops on the trap, be, oh, no, nah, this is a trash or whatever. And then like, he, I feel like he had a lot to prove with this one because a, yeah. I, I done seen a lot of people talk about, oh, is Joey falling off or this and that? Like, just cause he hopped on one trap beat or a couple, mm. but he's just like, everybody's just like, oh, is he falling off? And then he's just like, oh, y'all think I'm falling off? 2000 those are that you yeah you know what i mean your head and like <laughs> and like he's been he's like been before before like the forever story came out that was number one for me that's how good that's how good it was for me yeah mm-hmm. that showed how I, much G, how much gid is an artist now like just not just not a rapper man like that was that yeah. was his that's a fact but you know joey man he like I don't know if it could compare, like, compare it to, like, 1999. Like, maybe bar-wise, bar 19 hours was better. But, like, overall, I feel like 2000 was better because, like, everything came together, you know what I'm saying, with the bars, the production, the features, you know what I'm saying, the pictures that he set per track, Mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Everything, like, you know what I'm saying? I still, you know what I'm saying, like, his deepest track to me, Right now is um Survivor's guilt. Yeah, you know what I'm one. saying. Like you can tell that's you know what I'm saying. That's a you know what I'm saying. Looking back on um survival tactics, mm-hmm. and it's just like Definitely. you know what I'm saying. He's been holding like you know what I'm saying all this in for so long. There's a lot that he had to say. You know what I'm saying on that track, and he's been holding it in for so long. Mm-hmm. And like you know what I'm saying, it's. You could t- you could feel the pain when he's when he's spitting that, you know what I mean? For sure. And then like the rest of the songs on the album was just straight heat. Definitely. Like that's like that's that that's man. It's between for, to me. It's between Forever Story and Two Thousand. That could be interchanged. For sure. I, I mean, and, and and for you, Jamil, like looking at both of those albums because those are ones that people that is critically acclaimed. People talk about it a lot, like. What are, what are your thoughts on the contrast of those two albums, and which one do you do you kind of prefer more at this point? And I, 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 and, I, and I know like they're both so high up there, but if there's one you could pick between the two, which one would it be? For me, if you put me on if you put me on a desert island and told me that I had to pick between Forever Story and Two Thousand, I'm picking Forever Story, and that's not to take anything away from Joey and from 2000 and from 2000 because to me 2000 is 2000 is the evolution of Joey as an artist 99 is just yo I got bars and I'm about to show y'all exactly how many bars I'm gonna yeah. hit y'all over the head with For sure. waves. Waves is bars, mm-hmm. but with an introspective, but with an introspective outlook on it. Survival tactics is bars, like yeah. cause that just bar after bar after bar on ninety nine, two thousand was. I learned how to actually create songs. Yeah. I learned how to actually craft songs, and now I know how to be a complete artist and step into my own as an artist. Like 2000 yeah. literally is 
So the, I feel like the best way to describe 2000 from 99, 99 is ready to die. And 2000 is life after, after death. death. Mm. Because really 99, good really good comparison. 99 is Biggie yeah. just learning how to be an artist because he was able to spend some time with Puff yeah. and with the hitmen to understand what an artist is but it's still bar heavy. Yeah. 2000 sure. is me, Puff, and the Hitman got locked up in a, we got locked up in the studio for like a few months and I now know how to put songs together. Me and Junior Mafia know how to put songs together and now we're going to give you this double disc and, and hope you enjoy it. Thankfully, Joey didn't do no double disc. <laughs> yeah, that's tough like, to pull off, man. That's yeah. And it's and it's tough to pull off when you don't. It's it's tough to pull off without having any filter, any filler tracks. That's on. the thing about double albums because a lot of artists they they know if they can't hit the mark they gotta put in filler tracks and that's where the yeah. album gets lost in. That day. it gets lost in the shuffle. And also, so there was just being too for the generation. You feel me? Like yeah. not too many people can handle anything past like twelve tracks. That's the other piece, for and sure. that's the other reason why I was like, yeah. Glad he didn't do uh, a double disc, um, yeah. but no, that's that's really what two thousand is. Two thousand is two thousand is the equivalent of life after, of life after death for for Brooklyn because I know Joey I know Joey a Brooklyn kid and um it's not too many, it's not too many MCs that really hold it down for Brooklyn now outside of Joey. And outside of Joey and Sky Zoo. Yeah. Um, but Joey does it. And Joey does it very well. Um, make me feel where I belong. Um, zip codes. Zip codes. Survivor, well. Survivor's Guild. Um, he had Jed on the album. On, yeah. on Want to Be Loved. And that was, that was nasty. Yeah. Um, but my favorite song on the whole entire album is Brand New 911. Oh my goodness, bro. Brand That's New 911 is my joint. Track is stupid. Brand New 911 <laughs> is my joint. Like, cause, yeah. cause, and, and willing to know this, I'm a Griselda fan. Oh yeah. Like, Griselda, my team, Benny the Butcher is the best rapper out in this new class of MCs, period. So when, when you get West Side, on the track, and you have West Side do what he do over a static selector track like that. Yeah, it's it's magic. So um, I'm gonna say this: another album since you're a bigger Zelda fan, you need to listen to is is Rome Streets "Kiss the Ring," bro. Rome Streets, <laughs> that's an album you gotta listen to. Like that, bro. It, it's up there. That's another. There's been a lot of good albums I released. That one is up there as well. So and that was and, and, and that's gonna be. That's gonna be my listening for tomorrow. So for sure. yeah, definitely. Because everybody been talking about Rome. Everybody been talking about this Rome Streets album. I'm telling I was you, like, bro. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's serious. It is. Yeah. I listened to it this morning. I was like, man, he's he's making a case up there, up there as well. <laughs> definitely. We're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show, and now we're getting to the second half of our album reviews, and to start off with Kid Cudi's Intergalactic. Um, in this new album, which was, you know, for the animated experience and, and, and show on Intergalactic, there's stimulating tracks and splashes of different vibes as it, you know, flows well. And there's just an easygoing nature of the entire project. Um, to you, Isaiah, like, like, what were some of the best elements of this and just kind of, like, how, how you feel he put this one together? Well, for starters, like, when I first listened to this album, like, I forgot how much, like, I like Kid Cudi like that, to be honest. Yeah, man. Like... To, like it took me back. It really took me back. <laughs> Even some of the tracks on it is like very like two thousand and ten, like or two thousand yeah. like early like late two thousands. I mean, yeah. But it's just like you could tell like yo like he's not a he's definitely not a regular rapper. You feel me? He never was. Like this, I feel like this is like a prime example of like how much of an artist he is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, like as like an artist rapper. He's the one that like everybody from like a lot of people from this generation looked up to. 
sure. and you can kind of see it through like some through some of these tracks, like um. Like the yeah, Don yeah. Tolera feature, the the Ty Dolla Sign one, like, I mean, yeah, he has some true. really dope collabs on here as well. And I feel as though Cuddy knows how to collaborate with artists. Like he does, he still does. Like even even when he even when he's featured, like we were even talking about, um, um, I think it was this this past weekend, but the I M Y two track he did with Drake on C O B, like he knows how to collab with the best artists. And even on on this project, I feel as though, um. Especially with the with even two chains, two chains, um, um, Don Tolliver, like he just he just really, I, I think he it wasn't like his best project, but it was one where he inter interpolated just a lot of different tracks, and his mind as a producer as well is, is up there. That's what I'm saying. The production on the it's like because he makes his own beats, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of- that's probably why because it's just like the way he's like able to like be like an instrument in these in yeah. these in these beats that he's created. It's just like wow. Like it's and, that melodic feel that he taps into that is just yeah. like bro, it really made me remember how why people felt as though he was gonna be so special. And why I mean he still has had a special career. I mean I mean he's not uh he said recently he's gonna take a break from music after this album, but this album really took me back to like, okay, this is why we all love Kid Cudi. Like, like, like exactly. this is if this was like a greatest hits project, it showed, hey, this is why Cudi's up there. Exactly, like, bro. Let me like look at my phone. Look at how many tracks I look at how many tracks I saved on on on, on the, from from his album. <laughs> yeah, man, it's a lot. That's how like, bro. I I could easily myself going see myself going back to these songs tonight. That's what I'm telling you. I was doing it last night. Last night I was listening to it, man. Like this is a dope. This is a dope project to me. I really feel as though he 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 put put together something that was that was really good. Like in terms of him saying that he's gonna take a break a little bit. Like, do you feel as though, especially with where he's at in his career, like he's the Kanye beef was another thing recently. Mm -hmm. There have been so many other different things that have been on the outside of music that I feel as though have, have affected him. Like. Does that surprise you to hear him say, like, I'm going to take a break? Or is it one of those things where you think that some of the outside things have kind of affected him and his creative process? I'm not surprised. I mean, his music is all about literally mental health oh, yeah. only for the most part. Like, you could tell, like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was calling him soft when he came out, you know what I'm saying, for expressing his feelings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not surprised, you know what I'm saying, that he's, you know, taking the precautions, you know what I'm saying, to help his mental health, you feel me? For sure. Like, bro, as a producer, like, as a producer, bro, this was, like, heaven. <laughs> you know That's what I'm saying? What I'm saying. Like, I, I know for you, you you could have appreciated this even more. Like, what aspect of his producing do you, like, admire the most? Like, even for you, like, you know, you want, you make a lot of beats. Like, what a part of his, of his style and his craft kind of, like, inspired you the most? Well, like, I'm really into, like, kind of, like, the, his, like, ambience. Like every time he creates like an ambient track, and it's just like the you know what I'm saying the chords that that are involved with it and like the different sounds like you know some sounds that you wouldn't expect you know what I'm saying like weird sounds you know what I'm saying I like all that stuff you feel me and to see how he puts them together mm-hmm. and like you know what I'm saying creates music you know what I'm saying exactly like it's. It's you know what I'm saying, and he you know what I'm saying. He inspired a lot of people. You feel me to make beats, and to like and to also you know to rap as well. You know what I'm saying. Like yeah. Travis Scott even said it himself. If there wasn't no Kid Cudi, you know what I'm saying there wouldn't be. Yeah. Was it Kid Cudi or was it Trap? Was it Kanye? I think he said Kid Cudi, right? I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was Kid Cudi. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna just go with Kid Cudi. So <laughs> if, it, if, it's, if it's what we're talking about now, <laughs> it's what we're talking about. If there was no Kid Cudi, there'd be no Travis Scott. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Definitely, man. Even like Drake, you know what I'm saying. I feel like from early on in his career, he took inspiration from. Oh, he from, definitely took inspiration. You listen to a lot of so so far gone, and that is heavily, I think, heavily inspired by it. what some of Kid Cudi has been do, was doing. So yeah, yeah. but honestly, yo, that album. And yeah, <laughs> even though you know what I'm saying it's not his best album, because I would say you know what I'm saying there was a couple of skips. Like, yeah, I definitely. I wasn't, yeah, really, I wasn't really jacking the the two change one to be honest. I I was not feeling that one. 
I was not. I was not really. I wasn't really jacking that one, but like everything, like, it was. It wasn't a flawless project, but I think the majority of this is stuff I will go back to. I definitely, I yeah. definitely think it's stuff I, I will, I will replay a lot. That's a fact. I mean, like I said, bro, look at my playlist. Look at it right there, guys. Look at one, two, what? One, two, one, two three, three, four, four five, five, six, seven, seven eight. eight. And how many? How many songs does does this thing got? Does it got fifteen? I think it's fifteen. Two, three, 15. Yeah. That's yeah, a that's 15, a high that's yeah. a high amount of saves for a 15 song project. <laughs> that's over high half the album. Yeah. Yeah. High amount of saves. Playlist. Yeah, bro. It, it was yeah. really, really impressive. Um and now getting into Tory Tory Lane, sorry for what album. Um in this project, you know, Tory, he adds just in different melodies and aggression as he um doubles down on kind of like a nice for what kind of sound in a borderline R and B feel, but what were your thoughts on just, you know, the infectious hooks and some of the uh, appealing beats in it? Because it's interesting, like, Tory, he he does have this, the public opinion of him has changed a lot, obviously. And sometimes people are divisive in terms of, like, how are they going to approach one of his projects? But how did you feel about the music in this and the, the beats he decided to put on it? It's just, like I said, Tory's just in his element. Yeah, like, he, was his, he was in his bag on this one. He, he just... I don't. It's like nothing is gonna stop him from, from another. From, I, we were talking about how Kid Cudi reminded of us how of of why we always liked him. This album yeah. to me was the same thing with Tory. Like, oh yeah, this is why like Tory used to like be a really big deal. Exactly. Tory, Tory still is a big deal. Even yeah, still, though, still like, is. Yeah, still is. I know that there are things that have changed people's opinion of him, but he still he still is a big deal. Yeah, he still is a big deal. You know what I'm saying? I always like Tory. You know what I'm saying? As an artist, you feel me? Because it's like he could do so many different things. Yeah. It's like to me, he's like Drake, but on like a in a different way. Yeah, because he do, he tries like he tries different things, and he tries like, the Drake formula every now and then. You can tell, yeah. like the the, the 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 switch up switch up the beat pattern, like three minutes in, <laughs> like have two different yeah. songs in one, like yeah. And don't forget, bro, Tory's a spitter for real. Oh yeah, like Tory could spit, sure. like you know what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> what's that one song? I have it right here. Let me get off the key. Yeah. Where to start? Oh, yeah. Where to start fire? Like, this man, because, like, not only he could, like, you know, spare bars, like, this man could flow. This man, like, and it kind of took me back. Like, I kind of was just like, you know what I'm saying? It took me back to when, uh, remember him and Joyner were beefing in 2018? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, Toy, like, I don't know. Toy will never lose, like, the fact that he's hungry in his music. You know what I'm saying? Never. He's never I mean, he's always that. hungry. Like, he's never comfortable, at least when he making music. You know what I'm saying? It's, like, never really, like, a flaw. He's never given off, like, a satisfied feel, like, ever. Yeah. He's always been, like, I'm going to keep coming, keep coming with heat. And this project, he did that. Like, he even had the, uh, I don't know if he listened to the Alone at Prom, but he, he did, it. his last album was Alone at Prom, and it was, like, more of, like, this, like, retro 80s feel to it and you can tell he's experimental as well he's not just like gonna stay in the hip-hop r&b bag like he, he can get experimental as well and i think like that's tory he really does try to like make sure that he 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 tries new things like he, he goes into different things and not like just make himself feel complacent exactly and other people like people be like i remember, remember when joiner was like trying was trying to just like yo bro he was not like he dropped something calm against against Toy. He's just like, nah, ain't no way he could rap better than me. And then Toy yeah. Lane just came back and just, in my opinion, in my opinion, Toy Lane's won that. Oh, just yeah. because Wonder wasn't expecting that. You feel me? Yeah. So he had to retaliate fast. But this album, you feel me, just kind of proved how versatile he could be with everything. You feel me? The versatility was displayed oh. at a really high level. Like and that's not, I think that's the thing he always wants to show that he can be versatile and he, and he did that with this project. This was a long album. This was like a twenty song, twenty twenty. I think it was twenty songs. This was a long. Songs. This was a long project, man. Like so, I think, and even like you said with Intergalactic, I saved a lot of these songs. Like a lot of these songs, I saved. Um, there were a few skips for me, but the majority of it, I think he he hit the mark. For real, like to be like it's like. The reason why you skip Toy Lane, it's you, you'll skip a Toy Lane song. It's never be, it's not because like the song is bad. It's usually just you're not. It's, it's not preference. Like, it's preference. It's, it's preference. always preference. Yeah. Because like, 
know what I'm saying? Like, as y'all, you know, I'm a producer, you know what I'm saying, artist. Yeah. So I see, you know what I'm saying? I watch some of Toy's Twitch streams where it's just like he's recording in his studio. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like yeah. he always tries to get it right, you know what I'm saying? Whatever punching or whatever take he does, you know what I'm saying? It's like, even if the song is not going to be somebody's cup of tea, you know what I'm saying? You could appreciate how, you know, finished it is. You feel me? His songs oh, are never sure. unfinished. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and now getting into the Division and Jagged Edges, uh, uh, What's Up single. Um, the song was mm. produced both, both by both Jer- Jermaine Dupri and Brian Michael Cox, which, you know, both a slow burning instrumental and extremely passionate vocals. And it, it's Division, they've been in, in an interesting, like, position because, like, in their last track, If I Get Caught, caught Cheating, mm-hmm. had, like, major hate on it uh most people like we're not we're not feeling it at all like like how do you feel about this this song and do you think it was a good follow-up to kind of like the criticism they had got with their last single bro that that it did a whole 180 on the public on the public view seriously it went from Instantly. literally like it went from literally like 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 modern day r&b you know what i'm saying and then he flipped that around into like old school on he like did you see the video yeah, videos. the man was crying in the rain. Niggas, that's that's where it used to be at. Crying. That's where it niggas used to be at, man. Rain. I'm telling you, R&B I'm doesn't saying, do like, it like that anymore. Like, ain't nobody was crying in the rain for like 15 years, and he brought that back. Like, you know Bro. what I'm saying? And he Literally. brought that back. And like, yo, that's that's like the that was like that's like a definition of like true R&B. Yes. You know what I'm saying? They went back to the core. I, I like That's how they, the they went back to the core. They went. They For really sure. went back to the core. Like he even got the, like Jermaine Dupri. That's you know a goal, man. That's, That's a goal. Go. Go. Made possibly one of the you know greatest R&B albums ever in Confessions with Usher. Like, bro, like that's exactly. Come on, man. Like you're not missing with Jermaine Dupri. Like the vis- <laughs> like never. Yeah. Like. To be honest, bro, like the vision, like I feel like he released one of the best R and B tracks of all year. Oh yeah, because this really brought it back. You know what I'm saying to you know what I'm saying what people miss in R and B or what people was talking about what's missing in R and B today. Yeah, you know what I mean, like because a lot of R and B is considered saying, toxic. Like, oh, a lot of R and B, yeah, a lot of R and B is just considered toxic, and it's just it. I think today's R and B is good, but it doesn't have what '90s, what the vintage era of, of R and B had. Like, there was something that was in '90s R and B that was like literally like, it was made. It was love music. It literally was that. <laughs> today's is a lot different. Like R and B artists are more yeah, like because- rappers than rappers are. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. It's like because it's just like R and B at the like R and B in the '90s had a formula to keep it afloat. Yeah. Nowadays it really doesn't. Oh, it does, but it's like, you know what I'm saying? You could find the same things in rap now. You feel For me? For sure. Or rap influence I feel like rap influenced the R and B. That's the thing. It's like I mean R and B is going to be influenced no matter what generation we're in. Mm-hmm. But it's just like you could see it clearly, you know what I'm saying? How like, you know what I'm saying? It's like a fine line or like a very not a fine line, but like a very Weathered line, yeah, yeah, like for a sure. line that's pretty much pretty much gone away. Between yeah, it's like faded. R&B mm-hmm. and like you know what I'm saying rap, because you know you had trap soul. You know what I'm saying, and I enjoy trap soul. You know what I'm saying, oh, yeah, like, definitely. Or yeah. the trap soul artists and all that, but it's like that kind of like you know what I'm saying erased that line. For sure, that's what I that's why I feel like you know what I'm saying on B. I guess it's kind of taking a back seat. Because most of them could be considered rappers right now. Mm-hmm. You know Definitely. what I'm saying? Yeah. The, and, and and that's what makes it so, that's what makes it so different. I think you're like division. Like uh, another thing, how do you feel as though, like you think this is the, the, a good enough single to build up? Like, do you think this could be their last single before their next album drops? Like, like, do you think this was good enough to be like, Hey, like they are ready whenever, maybe next month to like finally put this project out. No, they, I think they ready. Yeah. I, I really think they ready because, like, this was... This track showed to me that it was This time. had to be... This, this track showed to me. This pretty was, big, you know? Yeah. It sure. was... Uh, 
new creator series that everybody was tuning into. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? There's only two songs, two part series, two song series, whatever. Yeah. Feel me from if I get caught cheating. The um. What's dang up? It, that song. <laughs> what's, what's up? What's up? <laughs> yeah, bro. I mean, yeah. It's leaving my head because of how you know what I'm saying how good it was. Yeah, bro. But like, freaking, really yeah. Like, it really did a 180. Like, because you have every, you had all the females' attention for one. That's what you, that's really the main thing you need. A girl, you know what I'm saying? All the girls' attention for R&B. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, people arguing over this. You have people doing their own remixes to this song, doing it in a female, in a female perspective. You saying a girl's perspective? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Instead of the male perspective. And then like, and then he comes out with this, and then just people just like, wait, maybe he's not, maybe he's not that toxic after all. You know what I'm saying? And then a lot of people is just like, and they said oh, the division. You no, know? that's what I'm saying. Like they even mm-hmm. said like, hey, like just wait on the next single because that's the one where you guys are really gonna get what we're trying to do. And they they flipped mm-hmm. it. They literally flipped it the, the perfect way. And I think like you said, like the this was the the right build up, and they're gonna be ready whenever that album drops for sure. That's what I'm saying, and it's got enough hype to drop it right now. Yeah, you got yeah. like I'm like especially with the when it, when the if I get caught cheating, like Queen Naja, freaking I, I was on the lava. It was like Queen Naja, him and uh, me, um, Capella Gray. Yeah, we're all Gray. arguing about this song. Tell man, me. I'm saying it's just like that's crazy. I'm getting celebrities' reaction to this song, you feel me? Yeah, it it literally caused that much of a stir. It, the stir that it caused up was was the was crazy, man. Caused. And they and they got what they wanted. That's that's what you want. You want people to if people aren't talking about your 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 music in a good or bad way, you're not you're doing something wrong. So with, yeah. they they literally f- figured out the perfect marketing marketing strategy and and and, and milked it, you know, the right way. So absolutely. Um, and, and now getting into our last single, uh, our, our, our last review with Smino featuring J. Cole's single 90 Proof. Um, in this new track, Smino is kind of on a certain thematic path, and there's just a, a silky cadence complemented by Dreamy backing vocals. And even with J. Cole's verse, you know, he had just a cautious gloating packed into it. Um, but to you, like, what did you think about like this being a smooth track and just kind of like how it tied into the theme of, of a Smino song? Um, First off, I want to say like, yo, bro, everybody, it's like every everybody's in love like this time for, this time around this summer. I mean, for oh, like, you had Kid Cudi talk about love half his song, then you know what I'm saying the Vision released that song, and then you know what I'm saying, you know, and um J Cole, J. Cole. with that song, like I'm seeing I'm seeing a pattern I'm seeing a pattern seeing a here. Pattern. Like, <laughs> it, it's cuffing season is coming. It's cuffing season. season. It's definitely cuffing season. You know what I'm saying, yeah, but like. This was definitely a smooth track, and they did it their own way. Yes, I like, like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like we could definitely see like the experimenting with like the vocals. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And then J Cole, like that with the verse on um, with the verse, it kind of reminded me of like when like, he was on um, Pretty Little Fears with Black. Oh yeah, yeah. This was like the same vibe. This is like kind of like the same vibe it was given. For sure, like I don't like they need to like Jayco needs to hop on more on more song like love songs like that. I'm telling you, man, that's what I was thinking too. Like he can get in that bag, like he definitely can can get in that bag more. Like that showed me, that showed me something. Yup, and you know what I'm saying, Smino. You know what I'm saying, experimental as always. Yeah, I'm saying did a great job with that. To be honest, this is a calm. You know what I'm saying? It's a really calm track. For sure. It, it, it absolutely is man well also i, I wanted to to, 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 to uh, shout out jamil thank i uh, thank, thank thank him so much for being on and isaiah thank you so much for being on as well bro like this was an absolute pleasure love, love when we can do this man that's a fact we can do this again yeah absolutely but well, that wraps it up for tonight i'm host Winsor burns this has been full scope see you later